What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. We are out on location at Glacier National Park. We are almost to the Canadian border up here in Montana. And what got us here to this unbelievable, amazing spot is this 83 Honda GL1100 Goldwing Standard. This rad bike right here uh, was a project that we decided to do based on some, an invitation that we got from Justin Mackey, Lance Corporal Commanding Officer Justin Mackey, and then his buddy, Dominic Venucci. They have uh, put together these really awesome ADV adventure trips, and so I got the invite to join those guys. And one of the things that is classic with these adventure bikes, uh, those tours, is for guys to ride on, you know, what you expect, like, BMW GSs, Honda Africa Twins, KTM Big Bikes, Triumph Big Bikes, all the, you know, all the favorites for the adventure crowd, adventure riders. And I thought, let's do something a little different because we're not doing a lot of extreme trails when, when we go on those. Now, the last time I went on a ride with those guys, I rented an Africa Twin, which I absolutely loved. It was the uh, double clutch version. It was, it was unbelievable. Probably one of my favorite bikes of all time. And I've owned a lot of Hondas. Uh, what my, one of my classic Hondas in the past was the ST1100, the V65 Sabre. That was in 86. I had a couple of them, 86 and 87. Those things were insane. Power, speed, sport touring, shaft drive, just like an interstate eater. And in thinking of what bike to maybe put in the garage for some of these, this trip and future upcoming trips, I thought, Let's do something that um, felt right, really like the Hondas, and I, I hadn't even thought of doing a Goldwing adventure bike. And then there's the guys on the interwebs, on the YouTubes, you've probably seen them, Dos Honduros. Those guys go out and just absolutely rip on classic Goldwings like this. So after seeing what they were able to do, I thought that would be a perfect platform to build up off of. So here's my version of that, the ADV Goldwing bike. And let's take a look at it and just talk about some of the features and things that have gone into this one to make it an ADV Goldwing. I'm gonna start back here on the rear tire. This is a Duro, the, the brand. Now, let me say this, really weird tire sizes, 16 inch rear and 18 inch front. And to put tires on that was a real challenge to find like a dirt off-road tire, more uh, maybe like 50-50 was a bit of a, um, a challenge to find that tire and so I've got this Duro D-U-R-O and I think they're out of Ireland I don't know where this tire was made but it's a really weird size so it's a 130 90 16 and it's a tube type so there's a heavy-duty um, Harley tube in there notice it's got the side air chuck right there air valve and that's mounted to that aluminum uh, it's a tubeless rim but this is a tube type tire and after doing a lot of consulting with some guys who knew a lot about this i decided to not go and mount this tubeless style but to in fact put a tube in there um and i was kind of hesitant to do that i wanted that ability to patch uh, not not so much patch rather but you know if you get a like a puncture in a tube less tire you could just use one of those goof plugs those atv type goof plugs and um, patch it, you know, plug it, but with the tube in there, uh, there's a little more vulnerability. And so I've got some self, I think it stands that's in there. It's self balancing as well as, um, puncture sealing product in there. Happy about that. Haven't, haven't seen any of the little spots where if I had a thorn, you know, you'd get some of that weepage out and haven't seen that. So, uh, so far so good tire's been great hookup is really well done a lot of dirt roads adv uh i'm sorry uh, bdr type of roads and haven't had any issues with like traction corners really well just super good tire I, I like it a lot there might be other alternatives out there in the 16 inch size um and if you have any of those suggestions let me know put them in the comments but that's the one i came up with some other guys on harley conversions had done that exact same tire, so I thought it'd be good enough for me. And up front, this is a Heidenau. Again, another brand I'm not familiar with and I've never used before. This is tires from Germany. 
and it's a 120 90 18 which is pretty much like a dirt bike size tire rear and in fact this is a rear tire notice the directional arrow is pointing backwards and uh, the tread is backwards and i was told so when i mounted this up the first time I had the directional air going the correct way and then posted up a shot of this and somebody who was uh, looking out for me said on Instagram that I had mounted that backwards and in fact I did a little research and found out that it was if you put a rear tire on the front you have to put it backwards for braking traction. So we got it flipped around and it also does really well. I like all the spacing uh, on the tread and it's a pretty intermediate compound tire. I think it'll wear really well. It corners fantastic. Also does super good in the dirt. So that's a tire that both of these I've been super happy with. And again, tube, running a tube on that. So these are not mounted tubeless style, even though they're on a tubeless rim. Liking these tires a lot. Uh, this front fender, you notice that's not the Honda Goldwing fender. That's, I think it's off a of DRZ. I think it's a Suzuki front fender. Not exactly sure, but that was just kind of in the junk bin at the shop. And so we mounted that up there to give it more of a, I don't know, mainly for looks. The other reason too, is the stock fender was super heavy and it came, came around really far and it was very tight to the wheel. And I was, I was considering that maybe a rock might get up in there and bounce around and just didn't want to have that so swapped it out there's a lot more clearance in here for rocks to clear up and through and out uh, let's take a look at these lights these are just some rigid lights nothing special they were kind of in the in the junk bin as well and we removed the stock well that's the stock so we removed the the stock turn signals which were enormous if you ever seen a picture of these or if you have one of these bikes and you know what the stock turn signals are like they're absolutely huge pulled those off and in their place put a hole here my buddy cliff did this really good job we mounted these lights and they're super bright and they do a good job and that was a nice little spot to put them and they're wired off the high beam so when we're in high beam on that headlight then those turn on and as far as the light you're not going to be able to see that but that's h4 cyclops sports bulb that's in there and we're we're pulling less watts with the rigids and that cyclops than we were with the stock 65 watt incandescent bulb and super duper bright that that worked out really well we've got this little tie down loops right here as far as the suspension notice that we're puking some fork oil and that's because those seals are pretty hammered i bought the uh race tech gold valve spring and uh, upgrade kit for this bike and we did not get it installed in time for the trip so that'll have to be i'll put that in later and then we'll have to go on some more test rides with that and see what kind of a difference it makes now the suspension is really nice super plush uh, you go down the dirt roads and it does a great job of tracking absorbing all the little bumps when you get some air you can hear the thing clunk to the bottom stop and then there's really no uh like the compression is terrible in terms of big hits and it'll bottom out so it's it's if you really get into some aggressive stuff it's clunking on the bottoming and then on the full extension uh, and that's pretty noticeable and loud as far as the turn signals these are just ktm parts bins i think these are off the back of a bike got a bunch of these so we threw that on there and then notice i put a little hole and a zip tie here I was probably overthinking this, but I'm not really familiar with these aftermarket add-on windshield kits. This particular one is from National Cycle, and I don't know what version this is, but it's got the bracket here that comes down to the forks and this little stay. And I don't know, I was just envisioning a big blast of wind from a truck or something, pushing this, pushing back on the top, and maybe the little, the little snap thing in there coming out. And so I thought I'd put that on there as a little secondary safety. And so far, there hasn't been any issue at all piece of fuel line here for the rub spot on the headlight um that's kind of it there for the front side stock radiator haven't done anything there the fan works great comes on when it's supposed to does a nice job a little tie down loop and let's see i left on a lot of the chrome stuff that i was tempted to take off i left this thing on the, the chrome horns shout out to our buddy eric at xl adv size matters uh i took off a few there were some little cosmetic bevels uh that went around here just little beauty trim areas pieces i pulled those off um, but everything else is super stock the previous owner had changed the belt this bike i think has forty three thousand miles on it and the belt only has about 10 these carbs now this was super interesting uh when i ran this bike around vegas at home 
it did just fine. It ran really, really good. No issues whatsoever. And on the first day of the trip out of Twin Falls, it was hesitating. It had a really uh, noticeable, discernible lack of power. And I thought that it was just a significant jetting issue. And later on, I think after day one or day two, tried to troubleshoot what was going on. And it turned out that this carburetor right here, you could hear when you'd accelerate, pull the false tank. This is a false gas tank. That's not the gas tank, if you don't know this. It's here underneath the seat, carries the weight down really, really well. In fact, the whole architecture of this bike with the cylinders super low, the low uh, center of gravity in this thing, it corners really, really well on dirt roads. It's a ripper. It, it, it surprised me at how much speed you can carry on uh, like a forest road, a Jeep road, a logging road with these tires um, on this bike. It, it was, it's impressive. It does a really good job. So um, we pulled, anyway, back to this carburetor. So we pulled the tank off and listened through the intake. And then I put a piece of hose to my ear and I could hear what sounded like the vacuum top of this uh, CV carburetor uh, either had a hole in it or was stuck or something was wrong. You'd hear it flutter. And it was this particular one. And there was not, there's not a thing you can do about it. Uh, there's no clearance in here to get this off. So to service anything on these carbs, really you have to remove the whole carb assembly. You probably, guys who are more experienced at the GLs than I am, probably could get one bank, one side of carbs out. I'm not really sure. I haven't investigated that fully yet, but suffice it to say there was, there's nothing we could do out here on the field to, to fix that. So um, the next following day, just discovered that there was like this sweet spot in the RPM, about three to four, where it had power and it would rev and, and do a pretty good job if I kept it right in that range. And so by speed matching and gear selection, you know, matching, I could find that spot and, and it, it rode okay. And I did okay with it for that, that one day. And then all of a sudden on the following day, on startup in the morning, it went away. It was cured. It just stopped misbehaving. It had full power and it's been flawless ever since. So I'm on day two of it without any issues. So two days with that issue and then two days, two or three days now without that issue. And I have no idea what's going on. Obviously when I get home, I'm gonna order all the rebuild kits for all these carbs and then split them apart, see what's going on and just refresh them. I have no idea how old all the rubbers and seals and everything is uh, is in there. One of the things I did a little research on was that the bottom of the um, the assembly, you know, the needle assembly that slides up and down, some of the guys, I think I was reading where they say they file those and kind of get rid of the sharp edge and they, they sort of bevel them over. So I'll be looking into that a little further. And again, if you have any information on what may have been going on with that carb, I'd love to get your feedback. Um, so anyway, I upgraded all the fuel hoses. I like clear. I just love the idea of looking down and seeing the fuel flowing in there. Um, so I, th I threw that on there. I think I will rebuild the diaphragm here and the mechanical fuel pump. Let's see, obviously oil change, put fresh oil in there, used a, um, a Spectro motorcycle for, uh, not a four cylinder, but a Spectro oil, um, motorcycle oil. And then on these exhausts, now one of the things I want to do also maybe at a future time is, is look at either removing the inside baffle plate inside of this, this outer section here or maybe cutting it off. And I'd be looking for any comments or suggestions about that. I don't think I want to change the entire exhaust. I think what I'd like to try to experiment with is maybe put a little bend in here and sweep this thing up and just get it up to this angle right here. That would be ideal as far as getting it out of the way of rocks. Um, but again, looking at maybe removing that just for a little more performance, a little more sound too. Wouldn't hurt. This thing's so quiet. I ride with earplugs, cannot hear it. I can only hear wind noise. So smooth. Uh, underneath this panel is the little Schrader valve. So there's the gas tank right here. And here's the Schrader valve for the air suspension in the rear and uh, the master cylinder here. And it's got combined braking. One of my favorite features of this bike is when you press the brake pedal, you get a uh, braking action at both front and rear and that is that was surprising I did not know it would do that and it was absolutely it's it's just great when you get out on a dirt road and you're hauling the mail and you come up to a, a corner and you need to slow it down I just use the rear brake and that brakes both front and rear and and I'm finding that 
that is as good as the ABS that I had on that Africa Twin. Um, and I think, correct, you know, in the comments, let me know if this is the case. But if I remember right, it seemed like maybe the rear was was front and rear. The, 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 the foot pedal brake was front and rear. And it had ABS. And this feels, obviously this is not ABS at all, but it just feels super similar to that. The braking is very confident and I like it a lot. A big heavy bike like this, I think I think the brakes are really, really good. Uh, shaft drive, and then there's the air suspension, and also air suspension in the front. Taking a look at that, here's the valve for it here. And I didn't have any room once I put the fairing on, and so I've just got this little rubber hose here where I can access that. And I've had to add air every day. That's needed air. Um, let's take a look at what's going on up here. So quite a few updates and improvements as far as handlebar situation goes. So the stock bars were one inch and they were huge. They they came up super high. It was very uncomfortable. Um, I did some off-road testing and it, I did not like it at all. So I've got some pro tapers and these are the adventure bends and they're uh, I think they're absolutely fantastic. And one of the problems I had was this bracketry. This, this right here, this clamp is designed with a one inch opening and it fit perfectly on the one inch bar, but it does not fit on this one and an eighth bar. It's one inch out here at the controls, but I, I don't have real estate to put this bracket out here. There's too much obviously going on. And they only make this in one and then one and a quarter and even one and a quarter would be too small to go right there. So it just so happens that in the parts bin, I had some dirt bike brackets. These are just hand guard brackets and I had some spare ones. And so by putting those here, a little bit of tape for grip, this that's one inch. This was able to secure exactly to that. Same thing is going on over here. And that was a great problem solver. Um, oh, I noticed that this is sort of twisted. Notice the angle of that is a little ski wumpus. Same thing over here, they're both twisting in the same direction. So that's interesting as I've ridden this, that's moved a little bit. I'll have to see what's going on, but it's super secure. Nothing's loose up there, but that's turned. And then as far as a uh, cell phone mount, at the end of that, see there's an eight millimeter bolt. And then I threw a ram ball right here. This is just the one inch ram ball with the bolt and then a short arm. And there's my phone mount, a little mob, mob armor. These are great, like those. And then check this out, got my little clown horn on there. If anybody's in the way, if I'm just tracking through, like get through the national parks here, sometimes people kind of wander into the road to take pictures and blasting it with the horn seems obnoxious, the, the electric horn. So threw that on there, um, updated the, so we've got the bars and then check out these grips. These are really cool. Obviously red, great color, like it a lot. These are the Vans, bottom of the shoe, Vans, sole of Vans shoes. These are made by Odie and then marketed by a company called Cult, C-U-L-T. And these are just probably one of my favorite things about the bike. And they feel really good. And um, I have no complaints about these. I'm not gonna change them. In fact, I'll probably run these grips for the, the remainder of ownership of this bike, hopefully, which is a long time. Scrambler mirror. This is the short arm version of their standard mirror, which is significantly longer. I did not want to use ADV, one of their ADV mirrors. I wanted it to be round. And with the Scrambler, it does not fold back in. I have only taken this bike to about 96 miles an hour. At 96, it felt like the Gemini capsule on re-entry. Shook and rattled and it felt like it had more power maybe to go to 100, but I wasn't having it, did not want it. At 80, this thing loves it. It's super happy at 80, it cruises at 80 all day long, so I think that's the magic speed. Nothing more, it does not need to go 90 miles an hour. There's nothing about this bike that should go 90. These tires with the tubes, the off-road tires, I just, I just think this is now an 80 mile an hour bike and it likes that speed all day long. Um, this was all standard, didn't change anything in here. Uh, now, this master cylinder I changed out. If you know what, what you get on the stock bike, it's a, it's a plastic reservoir, which it just seems sketchy. And if I was able to, you know, if I tip this bike over, I was a little bit concerned that that might uh, shatter, break. So a metal one seemed like a super good upgrade. And I also wanted uh, an adjustable lever because 
the lever on the stock one was in a terrible position. It felt like it was super far out, and I, I, I preferred a close one. And I thought about modifying the lever or changing out to a different level or lever, and it just seemed like going, going to a metal reservoir was the way to go. And by using um, a Honda ST, I think this is like ST1100, mid 90s bike that was the solution for both things and that's worked out really well the only thing it doesn't have is a perch for the mirror mirror thread and i can get from ram they have a bracket that'll go right here and it'll have a threaded bolt at the top that i could put the mirror on but i did not think of that i didn't notice that and i didn't have time to fool around with that before the trip so i just threw on one of the uh, double take mirrors this is their little enduro mirror and it's done just fine. I have no problem with it. Um, obviously to see back in full, you know, I use this mirror, it's got a nice convex shape to it. And so I can see everything on the left side and a little bit behind me towards the right, but to really see on the right for like passing this, uh, I've just adjusted it so that I can kind of shoot a, a glance under my arm and see if there's anything in the blind spot for lane change. And it's, I've been super happy with it. I will be upgrading that to a full scrambler when I get home, but for the purpose of this trip, that's been super effective, really good. And then you see the trail tech here. And one of the advantages of having this trail tech is I've got all kinds of bike data that I, that I wouldn't otherwise have. And then like by putting my phone here, I've completely blocked the speedo. So what the trail tech gives me is a super nice big speed readout and then i've got you know elevation all the great stuff that you get with the voyager so i've got like engine volts here let me try to get rid of that glare i don't know what position to be in that could just be a problem for this so you know if you're familiar with this it's just logging kinds of stuff there's my max speed 88 and then as far as the trip 745 and i don't think that is i think i reset that once this has been the last couple of days. I've been tracking gas mileage and uh, I'm getting on the, when the carburetor was acting up, terrible mileage, like 23. And then it, it went as high as 30. Guys have told me they're getting 35 to 40 out of these bikes and I'm not getting that. And that again is probably something going on with those carbs, which we'll get that sorted out. Uh, and then of course the killer app on the, the Trail Tech is it's GPS and you've got some bike data here and the speed that shows up and I'm only running three screens So this is the this is the native screen. Uh, I forget what they call that But that's the one you can't can't uh, I guess you could turn that off, but I left that on This is the custom one that I set up and it's got some data that I wanted to see and then the map as well And you can pan that and zoom in and zoom out just like any GPS and I've been very impressed with it I've been super pleased with how much detail there is. I found a lot of roads. Oh, I found a lot of roads that, uh, little dirt roads. See, great detail, great topo detail. And this is the uploaded, updated US map that's in there, as well as updated firmware. So it's fresh on both of those. And I like it a lot. And I also, on the phone up here, I'm using O-S-M-A-N-D. And I've been comparing the two. What I've typically been doing is having one zoomed in and one zoomed out and then using them to find roads, small dirt roads. And I've done a lot of off, off the trail uh, exploring. And I've just been really impressed with how the trail tech's doing. This particular one, this exact one, I took it off uh, my KTM and I just transferred over. So what it's getting is power and I powered it off of the headlight basically. So this will come on, uh, it's powered when the bike is on, the headlight's on. And then the coolant temp sensor, I just stuck that in the radiator, it fit into the fins, no problem. And for Speedo, I'm running the GPS, not a wheel speed sensor, GPS. And I don't think there's anything else, TAC. Now I'm not running the TAC because I've got a really good, nice, big TAC right here, so I didn't see the need kind of ran out of time i just i just did those basics and and it's been awesome i'm really liking that trail tech on an old bike i think it's cool uh, as far as this little tank bag goes that is a chase harper and notice it, the only steel on the tank is right here in the center of this piece let me show you what's going on here this is really cool if you've never seen this when you open this up you've got the gas filler which is right here because the tank is under your seat and then this had a little tray that went in there for, you could put coins in there, whatever, little tools. 
and then I took that out because I'm running a spare tire keep or the tube is right in there and then one of the things I did was I drilled a bunch of holes I, I think I read this somewhere so there's you can't see them but there's holes drilled along the outside edge of this to bring in more air and I don't, I don't know where I read that but somebody had suggested because of the limited size of the openings here when you're at wide open throttle you benefit from the additional air that comes in from those side holes so I did that what the heck and that's a perfect spot to keep my tube this thing locks and secures I think that's a, a cool little feature and then anyway back to the tank bag this originally had the magnets here in these two little pouches, these two little areas. So I had to cut them out and they're right here. I, I had to attach them, secure them to the bottom. There's a hard plastic plate in here. And so those magnets are right here in the center and sit on the outer wings. Otherwise it would not have secured itself to where the wings are because that's just fiberglass right there. So that was the only way to get that to attach. Uh, let's see, nothing really over here. The battery's under this side compartment right here. And um, look at this seat. So this is cool. Shout out to the folks over at the Alaska Leather Company. This has been absolutely fantastic. Thought it would be hot. It is not. Um, rode around in Vegas on a 113 degree day. Speed, uh, not speed, but temperature checking uh, the engine. And thought I'd be sweating a ton and not at all. This has been great. Super comfortable. Now, obviously, the seat itself is mega plush. Super mega plush. There we go. Alaska Leather Company. If you if you like this, you should absolutely pick one up for your bike, no matter what it is. So I thought that um, this would be, so, you know, vinyl. Vinyl is sweaty and um, super comfortable, though. And then this is now mega comfortable. Let's, let's take a look here at this luggage system. So... Green chili. Uh, I'd never understood what the green chili system was, their straps, uh, until I started to set this bike up. And I did not want to attach any kind of rigid carrier system. I wanted to go with a soft bag setup. So I investigated their stuff and discovered it was exactly what I needed. So underneath this, I'll, I'll show you this here in a second. Underneath the bag here is a soft rack system. system. And then attached to that, I'm using these giant loop pronghorn straps. And these things are securing and carrying these dry bags, these green chili bags. And on this side, I've got sleeping bag. And these, the 32 inchers, are incredibly strong. I, I did a little bit of a weight test on them. I secured them to something in the garage, in the shop. And then I just kind of bounced on them. And they held me. I weigh probably 175. No problem at all. And they're obviously doing a great job holding that sleeping bag on there and then the green chili these are green chili straps and, and they loop self loop through this bar right here there's a nice beefy chrome bar underneath here and those cross up and over and then they have cam lock cinch lock here and I just tighten those and that's what is securing the bulk of the bag and then across the top is another one and what I like about these is they've got this little elastic you can see how that thing stretches. And so this top strap, and it's also got these loops in here where you could attach other things. So um, a lot of this stuff is multi-purpose, multi-use, and there's no real set formula or format to how to set this thing up. You can basically engineer it any way you want. This is just how I happen to do it. And it's working out super well. On this side, I've got a small cot and a folding chair. And uh, I think I, I show my dirty clothes on this side. I, I've not been super happy with like water bottles. They're just kind of shoved under here. I think I'd like to come up with something a little better than that. This backpack has proven super good. I like the shape of it being square and it's just an old yeah, East Pack backpack that Lisa had and she used in college to backpack through Europe and it's done a really good job. Like that a lot. So with the top bag removed, you can see the webbing here. This is like the base of the system. This is, uh, I think they call it the ladder system. And I've basically got all of the loops here tied down. I just used some paracord. Again, the philosophy of this bike is sort of like rough and ready. 
um, using whatever materials I had on hand. I tried to salvage as much and repurpose uh, moto parts and other things as much as possible. And all of that is anchored on this big beefy bracket here that goes underneath. This is the kind of the sissy bar situation on the back. And that's all looped in and secured. And then all of the attachment points, like here's the cam and buckle here. This is the strap that goes up and over the entire top bag. And that's looped through down here on the bottom of the bar. And then I've got, this is what, this is what I think is just really great about their system is this elastic strap here and everything is a double loop. So I could have attached this theoretically probably down to the bottom anchor bar. And I just threw it on here, you know, again, just making this up as I went along, but everything is super versatile and you can loop through all of these little eyelets here and add and customize everything they throw these little chrome loops on here too. So between this system, their straps, and then these pronghorns from Giant Loop, I mean, you could come up with any number of infinite combinations and this is what I threw together. Now that I've spent a week living off this, I think I'll modify a few things for the next time, but I'm not gonna change, I don't think I'm gonna change any of these components. I think I'll just reconfigure some of the mounting setups that I had with this. Uh, back here, remove the stock tail light, which was enormous and weighed a ton. And I've got this plate here, and this is a cool plate deal. You can just slide, you, you, you take your plate. I took it off here, but you, you get the idea. You can just slide it in here. So if you went into an area where you wanted to remove your plate or you're making a video, or you had a plate that you, maybe a dealer plate that you're swapping around bikes, you could do that. And then for this light unit, this came off of I forget where I got this. I'll put that in the comments here, or in the notes rather. This is the real tail light assembly for a KTM 990, an aftermarket tail light unit. And what's super cool about this is it's an all-in-one. So it's brake, run, and then turn signal. So when it goes to turn signal mode, half of this is yellow on each side, depending on which side you're in signal for. And that is really super rad. It took a ton of weight off. It's very bright. It's, it's obviously like way, way brighter than the stock one. Good visibility. I did not want to have turn signals sticking out. Where would I put them? And so I uh, spent a lot of time looking for an all-in-one and that was, that was it. That was the one. It, I, I like it a lot. So there it is. There's our Goldwing, our GL 1183 adventure bike. It's, it's just impressive. I've, I've had a hell of a lot of fun on this thing. I can't honestly say that it matches any of the true adventure bikes in terms of performance or obviously ground clearance is a big deal with these compared to all the other true adventure bikes. But I would say this, a lot of guys, probably not you, but a lot of guys take their ADV bikes, their high clearance, high center of gravity ADV bikes, and they're just doing dirt roads. And this will do dirt roads all day long. This will do any of the BDR roads that I personally have been on. Now, there's some vulnerability down here with the engine. There's the oil filter. That's that big thing with the nut in the middle. And so that is an issue. And I'm looking at maybe building a uh, custom uh, skid plate for that. And that will help give me peace of mind. So I've not done any trail bashing or anything too crazy on this thing. But for any dirt road, logging road, a uh, little county road, bladed road, no problem whatsoever. I've been super, super happy with it. And I would continue to take up on any of those types of roads for more, you know, hardcore stuff. Obviously a bigger bike with a 21 inch front wheel and better suspension and better ground clearance would be the ideal machine to, to go with. But for most of the riding, I think I'm gonna do on this, uh, I've done some single track with it. I've done some stuff that's probably a little ridiculous for it, but I don't care. It's awesome. Get lots of comments. A lot of people stop. A lot of people are surprised. In fact, I was back in a dirt road the other day and there were some dirt bikers up in there and we talked for a while. They were very shocked that they were out there with, I don't know what this thing weighs, probably near 600 pounds, uh, Goldwing, 
they were pretty stoked about that. So I think this is, for me anyway, a fantastic ADV bike. I'd recommend it. I think you should try to put something like this together yourself. If you have any bikes that you've done that are sort of cross-purpose like this, let me know. Put it in the comments. I'd love to see links to your video if you have one or a blog or whatever on your bike. And let me know if you've got any cool stories with these old bikes. Now, the last thing I would say about this is, you know, back in the day, this is all there were. Guys would go down to Baja and they would they would go to Alaska and they would do their big adventures on bikes just like this, Harleys uh, and other bikes. Um, I've seen a lot of pictures, old 70s pictures of Honda Goldwings with uh, whatever tire was available of the day. And a lot of them were just street tires uh, in really unsuitable, crazy backwoods places. And I just kind of wanted to catch that vibe and do the same thing with this. And I, so far it's you know, I'm loving it and I think it's turned out really well. So uh, this could be your next adventure bike. All right. Well, as I always say at the end of these, like straight up, no joke. Doesn't matter what you're riding. Go out and get some adventure.